architect Divya Chakravarti. She completed her undergraduate studies from SRM University and she went on to pursue her masters in historic preservation and urbanism and study of the built environment from the University of California, Los Angeles. She went on to work for the Department of Planning and Preservation for the city of Pasadena, California. She also did a brief stint of work for Historic Scotland, Edinburgh, UK. She also worked on conservation projects like Kalsa Mahal, Gokhale Hall in Chennai and Marimala Pa Educational Trust in Mysore. She is currently working as a director of Samrakshan Heritage Consultancy. She is also a co-founder of the Artisan Reprisal of Traditional Materials. method and technology she goes on to conduct workshops to revive traditional and lost methods of construction welcome to the ugc lecture series for bachelors of architecture the subject we are discussing is human settlements planning the topic we are delving into is planning concepts in this lecture we will be discussing patrick geddes and the concept of conservative surgery ca perry and his concept of neighborhoods and finally we'll be looking to lee corbusier and his contributions to urban planning we'll start with the case study of maharashtra based on the theories proposed by geddes so the constellation theory was mumbai nasik aurangabad nagpur and pune mumbai is the economic and capital city nasik is considered the religious city aurangabad a completely administrative city Nagpur a political city and Pune the educationally important city since all the five factors necessary for development of a region are divided with five different places the administrative of that region has a gradual progressing path because a certain region doesn't have that Maharashtra state has gained prime importance for the country in the last few decades in spite of being formed in the 60s contributing to 15% to the country's industrial output and 13.3% of the gdp production manufacturing automobile thermal electricity projects have played an active part in the growth of the state the distance between the cities and maharashtra ranges mostly to from 100 km to 300 km making transportation connectivity interdependency prosper within the state Maharashtra is divided into 6 revenue divisions which are further divided into 35 districts. These 35 districts are further divided into 109 subdivisions of the districts and 357 talukas within Maharashtra. The 6 administrative divisions are Amravati division, Aurangabad division, the Konkan division, Nagpur division, Nasik division and finally the division in Pune. The administrational aspect of Maharashtra is quite unique factor since six divisions are set up as a network working together to form a well efficient working governance. Now if we move on to the concept of conservation surgery suggested by Geddes this was suggested done in Edinburgh as a st case study example in the United Kingdom. Heritage conservation and urban conservation If you look at the process of conservation it is the process of protecting the cultural representation of the past it has a strong connection through time and space heritage conservation is a process of protecting the heritage properties old buildings monuments and structures which represent a significant part of the human history if you look at the scale of approach it is holistic you need to conserve built heritage as a part of a broader vision of civic evolution conservative surgery was a method or a planning approach developed by geddes take into account of existing physical social symbolic landscape of a place in order to allow its most favorable future development evolution is a process of adapting over time to respond to the needs of time this is the concept of evolution proposed by charles darwin so what geddes told was it similarly it happens even for studies and cities as such so from the stone age you had the paleolithic age and the neolithic age there was a gradual progression of the urban scenario from the paleolithic to the neolithic that has how man goes from one step of evolution to the next 
cities as well as an urban scenarios also evolve from one to the next stage. The industrial age, invention of machinery, railways and markets, manufacturing industries, optimized resource use. So all of these were the changes that were occurring. And if you look at the consequences, we were having decline of life, wasting of energies, trade competitions, war competitions, nature competitions, all of this was happening. And at the same time, if you look at the urban scenario, you had industrial towns developing and the use of coal fields happening. Conurbation was there in the sense of a modern mining town and pseudo cities. Pseudo cities are nothing but slums that were created around these industrial towns. So all the low wage workers could live in that. So the first time the whole character of slum came into being. This is the neotechnic city, which is to the competitor actually gives the glorious part of the history. Carefully economization of natural resources, planting trees, housing buildings, town planning and city designing, demand and create noble streets of noble house gardens and parks, rapidly accumulate both civic and individual wealth, rational use of resources, put a better use to them, bettering of man and his environment together. So in this stage, you had the growth of a cultural city and a garden city. In the Paleolithic stage or the previous stage of the industrial era, it was completely crowded cities, slum cities, pseudo cities and industrial cities. So there was obviously a kind of change because they knew how the environment, the air, the water was getting rapidly deteriorated. The town planner should conserve the evolutionary process of a city to enable a civic evolution. What is the difference between them and why is this difference seen to be needed? The community needs, what are they? Aesthetic, religious, civic needs, historical needs, economic needs, political needs. Geddes's conservation surgery, if you look at it in Edinburgh, UK, water supply area protection, mountain area. So number one, Edinburgh was in a raised level. Water supply was not an issue because from the mountains, they obviously had water. It was raised at that point of time because of a requirement of defense and the castle was built at a higher level from the sea leaving unbuilt rustic area between, growing together so you could actually have future expansion, placing schools, playgrounds, gardens, etc., removing slums, creation of an open space, demolishing unnecessary mews, that is private gardens or stores, which only are suitable to a very rich community, formation of gardens and courts, value of opportunities of activity for youth and for the general citizenship, civic volunteering. The methodology he used was in terms of tools, camera and measuring tools. Exploring the city was the outlook tower that he constructed. Compiler record, permanent and temporary elements, static as well as fluid, people as well as places. Sort and classify, number one, examination and criticism of the material he's collecting. Selection, that is distinguishing the essential from the unessential and drawing conclusions from this selection. Though if you look at the concept of an outlook tower, what uh, Patrick Geddes did was in Scotland, he built this huge tower and actually put up a camera on the top of it, which captured images 360 degrees at every point of the day and night. So if you look at within this concept, that actually helped him come up with this concept of conservative surgery. The superstructure, if you look at it in a city, it should number one be a mixed use community. He promoted that the poor and the rich should always live together and not be segregated by any elements of built environment or even social strategies that were happening to not segregate these communities. So if you look at the superstructure, you have spiritual, educational, cultural, as well as place. So here you had an extra element to his Jedician, Patrick uh, Geddes's Jedician triad, which was education. Yes, that was also an element of place. What could happen in that place 
three different uses could happen spiritual use educational use and cultural use so all of these uses put together come up and work together in harmony to create a sensible city or urban fabric this was in the past james court these were pleasant homes and gradually when ch time changed and the bureaucracy changed and all these rich people were removed they started becoming student residences for universities this is the ramsey gardens and lodge this is a mix of student accommodation as well as an art school this was initially a huge residence for a lord professors intellectuals and artists similarly mount place in the late 18th century it was tenements that is poor people lived there now it's again become student residences mylands court is again student accommodation community of cooperative living and for learning intellectual interaction lady stairs close 19th century this is actually considered ready for demolition by the city council this is like before and after of what he suggested as conservative surgery instead of going ahead and demolishing it if the building is in good use you can just repair it and make sure it's given some purpose or use in the current urban fabric such that you take a part of history to the future number 2 you actually save a lot of money by not constructing a new building or by demolishing a building and number 3 most importantly that building is given a new life and people can continue identifying with that building even in the future this is the blacky house what he did to this was he just changed a few elements made sure bright light and air was brought into the old tenements remodeled the north side as a hall for the university this is saint giles house this has been again been made into student accommodation this is the old assembly close this has completely been pedestrianized and only used for pedestrian movement and no vehicular movement you can see the network of open space and the importance given to green spaces and even pedestrian activity over uh, automobile activity what he get his thought of conservative surgery versus the grid iron plan get his champion a mode of planning that sought to consider primary human needs in every intervention engaging in constructive and conservative surgery rather than the heroic all of a piece scheme popular in the 19th and early 20th centuries in and around this that is the tenement in edinburgh gedis commenced upon a project of conservative surgery gedis and his wife actually bought a tenement where a lot of these poor families lived he reconstructed or performed conservative surgery upon this project what he actually did was he weeded out the worst of the houses that surrounded them widened the narrow closes into courtyards and thereby improving the quality of both air as well as light so by simple measures he decided that that building is actually not a completely bad structure the best of the houses were kept and restored Geddes believed that this approach was both more economical as well as more humane. In this way, Geddes consciously worked against the tradition of the Great Iron Plan, which was resurgent in the colonial town design of the 19th century. The heritage of the Great Iron Plan goes back to at least of that of the Roman camps. The basis for this plan, as an enduring and appealing urban form, rests on five main characteristics. order and regulatory orientation in space and to elements simplicity ease of navigation speed of layout and adaptability to circumstance however he wished that this policy of sweeping clearances to be recognized for what he believed it was one of the most disastrous blunders in the checkered history of sanitation gedis criticized this tradition as much for its dreary conventionality as for its failure to address in the long term the very problems it purposed to solve so the what mainly he thought of the grid iron plan was it was monotonous it did not actually create any of the solutions that it was supposed to create in the roman camps the purpose of having an urban plan like that was entirely different but at this point of time as cities were changing and as people were changing and their requirements were changing he felt that the grid iron plan was very stringent monotonous and not suited 
and could not organically grow such that you could have conservative surgery and other such theories performed on this gridiron plan. So, he wanted to make sure that this gridiron plan was something that was not taken into the future and would stop with the 19th century or the early 20th century. This approach was not only unsparing to the old homes and to the old neighborhood life of the area, but also in leaving fewer housing sites and these mostly narrower than before, expelling a larger population that would again as usual be driven to create worse congestion on other quarters. So, what happens with a gridiron playout is when someone does not fit within that particular square, they are driven out and that that is what has forced them to create slums and other tenements outside this kind of a layout. So, it is very important to ensure all the classes of society are encompassed within the neighborhood or within the region such that there is no barricade within them. We will move on to C. A. Perry and his contributions. Clarence Arthur Perry was an American planner, sociologist, author and an educator. He was born in New York. He later worked in the New York City planning department where he became a strong advocate of the neighborhood unit. He was an early promoter of the neighborhood community and recreation centers. As a staff member of the New York Regional Plan and the City Re Recreation Committee, Perry formulated his early ideas about the neighborhood unit and community life. In 1909, he became associated with the Russell Sage Foundation as an associate director of recreation until 1937. His ideas were realized in neighborhoods like the Radburn layout through the work of Clarence Stein. Clarence Perry's neighborhood unit diagram from 1929. This was in continuation of what Patrick Geddes suggested of a region. His theory was region was still too big, we need to bring it down further and create something called a neighborhood unit. What he decided by the neighborhood unit is the radius should be one fourth of a mile. So, it should be completely pedestrian friendly. It needs to have a community center that is shared by all of the people in that neighborhood. It should be abutting an arterial street or a main highway such that you can easily connect to the next neighborhood and the, all schools, markets, all of that is in within a walking distance thereby reducing the concept of using automobiles. He basically suggested that 10 percent of any neighborhood should be recreation or park space which created an adequate green space or a lung space. The next important thing was the shopping dis districts that were within this neighborhood should be bunched together and should again be pedestrian friendly such that people could walk to the shops. His intentions were calibrated to the human foot and not the automobile. Of course, we should keep in mind that Perry's neighborhood unit was conceptualized in the 1920s way before cars were a common phenomenon. His notes on the plan above refer to walking distances, narrow streets and a mix of uses. We should also make sure we see that there is a fairly connected network of streets, another modern day casualty from the road classification system. You do not see cul-de-sacs in the diagram and in fact a lot of interesting streets on highways and arterials. A neighborhood unit, if you look at it, is the planning unit of a town. It evolved due to the advent of industrial revolution and the degradation of a city environment and the degradation mainly was caused due to high congestion, heavy traffic movement through the city, insecurity to school going children, distant location of shopping and recreation activities. A neighborhood unit was mainly set to create safely healthy physical environment in which children will not have to cross very busy streets to go to their schools or go back to their homes. So, they can actually walk by themselves in a safe environment, an environment in which women may have an easy walk up to the shops to buy their everyday requirements without again the use of an automobile, employed people may find convenient transportation to and from work, a well equipped playground is located near houses where children can play again within the safety of their houses and friends for a healthy development of their mind and spirit. The principles of the neighborhood unit 
unit of urban planning, street system, facilities were supposed to be in walking or pedestrian friendly facilities, population was such that, that all of these elements would satisfy the population, a sector or a kind of wedge was created in the city, so this is like a sector, size and density was controlled, neighborhood walkways again to concentrate on the pedestrian friendliness and protective strips. Protective strips were basically buffer zones that were created such that the neighborhood unit was protected from the arterial road or the main highways. Clarence Stain's conception, he pretty much took this concept and applied it to a layout. He decided that the walking distance radius can be up to one mile. So if you look at this figure over here, elementary school is actually in the center of the unit and within one half mile radius you have all the residents and the other half you have local shopping centers located near the school. So maximum when you have half mile and half mile the entire distance you would have to walk is one. Residential streets are suggested as cul-de-sacs or dead ends otherwise known as to eliminate through traffic and parking space which flows into the neighborhood. So if you actually allow for through traffic that reduces the security of the neighborhood. So he suggested that let's introduce cul-de-sacs such that people cannot pass through a neighborhood to get in somewhere else. Compact in size, mix of uses, network of streets, public open spaces, building typologies, parking strategies, transit opportunities, predictability and compatibility. This is the updated neighborhood unit with respect to today's scenario because now we have a lot of automobiles going in but still let's not bring that into the neighborhood. A neighborhood could still be self-sustained, still be pedestrian friendly. The only thing is that to go to work instead of suggesting an automobile movement, we can have transit points and suggest the route of railways or other trams or any other such routes that connect to the arterial road or the highways. So as such we do need to suggest that the neighborhood unit is one of the best units that have come upon in history of planning which promote a sustainable healthy kind of living because of pedestrian friendliness and the factor that the children can go in from home to their school as well as local shopping centers are required and available for everyday shopping and requirements. These are some examples. This is city of West Palm Beach, again the neighborhood how it has come about. But as time has progressed, the green belt is completely reduced and it is starting to get more congested. The 5 minute radius still exists, but the 5 minute radius is no more a 5 minute walking radius, but it's become a driving radius. The still that one mile has now become too much of a distance for people to walk because with the advent of the automobiles it has made people lazy. So like if I have to walk one mile, like if I just drive that one mile, I am going to reach in five minutes. So it has led to a lot of congestion. Now on to Radburn's concept. We did our best to follow Aristotle's recommendation that a city should be built to give its inhabitants security and happiness. The most significant notion in the 20th century, urban development. The first major advance in the city planning since Venice was Lewis Mumford's contribution again. So it was a concept of social planning, economic planning and urban planning. They knew they had to take the concept of the neighborhood and apply it in a number of other towns and make sure it actually works as well. So what Radburn did was, Radburn was created in 1929 for around 25,000 people over an area of 149 acres, 430 single houses were constructed, 90 of which were row houses, 54 were semi-attached units and 93 were apartment units. So what were the factors that influenced was rapid industrialization after World War I, migration of the rural to cities, dramatic growth of cities, housing shortage, the need to provide housing and protect from motorized traffic. So this is again a continuation of what C.A. Perry told in his neighborhood unit. So it is just a furthering that same concept. Henry writes six planks for a housing platform. So 
plan simply but comprehensively don't stop at an individual property line you need to adjust paving sidewalks sewers and the like to a particular needs of a property dealt with such that it's not a conventional pattern arrange buildings and grounds so as to give sunlight air and a tolerable outlook to even the smallest as well as the cheapest houses the second provide ample sites in the right places of the community use that is playgrounds school grounds gardens theaters churches public buildings and stores put factories and other industrial buildings where they can be used without wasteful transportation of goods or people cars must be parked and stored deliveries made waste collected that is vehicular movement plan for such services with a minimum of danger noise and confusion so vehicular pattern movement is very important in any urban layout relationship between buildings develop collectively such services as will add to the comfort of the individual at a lower cost that is possible under individual operation arrange for the occupancy of houses on a fair basis of cost and service including the cost of what needs to be done in organizing the building and maintaining the community if you look at into radburn's concept separation of pedestrian and vehicular traffic super block that is large block surrounded by main roads so these blocks were supposed to be self sufficient and around the block you could have your arterial or your main roads houses grouped around small cul-de-sacs or dead ends each access from the main road living and bedroom face the gardens and the parks and service areas to the access roads and remaining any land that was left was considered park areas or lung areas walkways walkways were designed such that pedestrians can reach social places without having to cross any automobile streets financial planning was parks without additional cost from residents savings from minimizing roads require less road area 25% less area gave 12 to 15 percentage of total park area the applications where it was used in the united states it was baldwin hills los angeles and kitty mat bc in england post world war 2 you had coventry stevenage brackenelly and cumbermold sweden and in india you have our very own chandigarh brasilia in brazil several other towns in russia sections of osaka in japan wellington in new zealand and within the united states you even had reston virginia columbia and maryland which were completely built on this concept they were entire cities that were built on the radburn's concept Now moving on to Lee Corbusier and his contributions. Lee Corbusier was the founding father of the modernist movement. He came up with a lot of town planning measures as well as architectural plans of buildings in a very modernist view. He actually came up with the concept of Siam. It was a a movement that was caused and brought about by Lee Corbusier at the request of a rich patron of architects. he came about this this process came about this organization was hugely influential it was not only engaged in formalizing the architectural practices of the modern movement but also saw architecture as an economic and political tool that could be used to improve the world through the design of buildings and through urban planning it affirmed that town planning is the organizations of functions of collective life this applies to both rural as well as urban settlements four functions of any settlement dwelling work recreation transportation which connects the first three with one another lee corbusier organized in cm assembly of constructors for an architectural renewal which systematically studied the problems of construction architecture and city planning he was one of the very few planners who actually combined urban planning architecture as well as construction of individual buildings he believed that you couldn't completely segregate these three theories 
at the end of this lecture, we have seen Patrick Geddes and his concept of conservative surgery. We have looked into C. A. Perry and his concept of neighborhoods. We have started with Lee Corbusier and his contributions. At the end of this lecture, we should be able to answer the following questions. What is conservative surgery? Discuss the role of Patrick Geddes in the field of planning. What is the neighborhood unit? Describe the contributions of C. A. Perry in the field of planning. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you.